Rick and Gordon, great to see you today. Um, about nine months ago, we were talking about this album oh, that you were going to thank make. Thank you. Sorry, you mentioned nine months. I just something else has sprung to mind there. <laughs> so the album from Brush and Stone. Uh, whose idea was it to put you two guys together, or did it come from either one of you? Ironically, it was uh, our mutual friend Malk, who's Rick's uh, roadie, tour manager, he, merch he, person. He does. The, he does the merch. Mad Malk. Right. Yeah. He's okay. And uh, he he's a huge fan of Gordon's, and uh, goes to I think he goes to virtually every show you do. He does, he? yeah, he does. And, Bless him. and he he used to come to a lot of mine, and he you know, works with me doing the most bits and pieces. He's using you and Gordon got you do an album together. You must do an album together. That's what that's what you should do. He's doing that, and and. It was like a, a long playing record with a needle stuck. <laughs> it was. For years and years. And, and years. I think probably your comment was the same as mine. Yeah, I'd love to. Where are we going to find the time? Yeah. I suggested to, to Gordon, when I came up and, and did his Bash in Birmingham, which was most enjoyable, I had a lot of fun playing on Gordon's pieces. So Gordon and I discussed it. And if I, I asked you, have you got some stuff you can send me? Yeah. That's how it started. Yeah. Isn't it? I think this album is a prime example of, of two guys that have been in the business so long, they completely trust each other to do what they mm. know is, is to be right. Mm. And the irony is, and I've never worked this way, but the way Rick works with Eric, his sound guy, is he, he, whatever he records, he just gives to Eric, and Eric goes away and mixes it. And what an incredible job. He's very good. The thing about Eric, Eric taught me to do this, and it, it, it goes back, I suppose, um, to when I was doing the re re return album. I was there, and he's always, and, the, and uh, he just basically said to me um, the equivalent of the words one day, why don't you go away and leave myself and James, who the two engineers were, mm. why don't you just leave us to it? Let us do some mixes. You come back. You have a listen. If there's anything that upsets you, like, oh, that trumpet's too loud or that violin's not loud, you just tell us, and it's dead easy. We go back to the copy mix. We just alter that little bit. Mm. You go away and we do it again. And they said, because... And it was Eric who taught me the way he said, you as a composer and a performer can't do what the general public do, and that's listen to your piece of music for the first time. The reason why I personally am absolutely delighted with this album is the love that Eric has put in to, the, to mixing this album. He genuinely loves the music. Both of you have been involved with concept albums one way or another, but there's certainly a theme. This wasn't going to be a thematic album, it was no. just going to be a mixture of tunes. It just so happened that it worked, worked out that way. And I said, I've got a suite of tunes, Rick, inspired by paintings. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll write a suite of tunes. But his were inspired by uh, sculptural images. Right. So you've got those, those two I mean, when, things happening. When um, I got uh, Gordon's piece, I got them in first. And I just liked the idea, I thought that's a really nice idea of that suite and I thought it would balance the album rather than we just do a mm -hmm. group of pieces to, to find something as well and it was um, it, uh, my game just, just um, purely because I was emptying out some boxes still from when I've moved and uh, one of the books that came out was a book on sculptures is it really? and, well, and I just sort of went well that's a good idea because <coughs> I, I think it would have ended up as a concept now I mean um, uh, Gordon came up with the idea for the name. Mm -hmm. He wasn't keen on my I had knickers and bras, which I, I thought. You said Gordon and Rick. I can see the commercial oh, yeah. disadvantage Gordon with that. Mother was Gordon and Rick plunk <laughs> a bit. That's, but I thought it was a great title in Russia, so I like I like that title yeah. a lot. When you received Rick's tracks, mm. was the one in particular that stood out for you? You thought, "Ooh, I can really do something with this." Most of it did, yeah. and uh, and to be fair to Rick, he said when he was writing this stuff, he was thinking in terms of, okay, Gordon's got to play in this, so I'm going to yeah. sort of fashion the music so it's going to work for, for, for me to play on this. Right. We did give each other sort of guidelines. The main thing that occurred to me was when I heard I thought, how the hell am I going to fit in with this? Because you've got this virtuoso piano player doing all this stuff, and I thought, I've got to be very careful how I'm going to fit in here. Yeah. It took a lot of time and a lot of thought. There's one particular piece where we played it, and I started putting bits and pieces on and that there, and Eric was great at this the radio. Right. Have a listen back to all the bits you've done. Right. He said, okay, now it's up. I'm going to do something and tell me what you think. And he played it back to me and he basically pulled 80% of it out <laughs> and just put little, little bits in. And, but it didn't sound like that. Right. It sounded like he, there was a couple of bits gone, but that, mm. that was all. And I said, yeah, well, what, what have you 
pulled out because it really works. And he said, most of it. Is that less is more thing? Yeah, it was. He said, said, I think it's about four or five different entries. And he said, the entries um, make more of an impact to what Gordon's playing Mm. than just playing all the way through. So I was very lucky. I mean, Eric, I mean Eric, Eric's great. I mean, I've known him for many years, and and he'll quite happily turn around to me if I do something. Um, it was, I, it was, it was in, interesting on this season with Gus. I remember recording that the first time I played through. I thought it was quite good. You know, well, by the first time I said that, that that's, that's really good. So, and he said, "Can I be just be brutally honest about your performance there?" And I said, "Yeah, of course you can, Eric." He said, "Crap." Yeah. He said, you could do it a million times better than that. I said, well, keep that one. And he said, why? I said, well, uh, 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 in case. He said, no. He said, because it's not good enough to go. Mm-hmm. So he said, why, why keep it? He, he, yeah. he, said, he said, if you think that's the best you can do, he said, we'll move on. He's great. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. And I'll tell you what, about an hour later, he sort of turned around with, with the, the, the Eric Jordan grin and went, there you go. So look at some of the titles: the discus thrower, mm-hmm. the thinker, David, the kiss. They're all they're very mm-hmm. famous statues. They are. Um, so did you write a piece of music with the title in mind, or did you just decide to call? I it can't that? do that. I okay. can't just sit down and. It, well, I say I can't. Occasionally, something will happen, and then I'll, I'll give it a title and piece. Of, but in this situation, what I did because I found the book. Right. I'd already worked on on Gorge. So I, I got the book, and it was literally a matter of flicking through the book. And if I found myself stopping at a page, you start thinking of things in your head, and then I would take it through, I would put it by the piano, and I would look at it and I would start, just start playing, uh-huh. and come up with some minor right I did. Gordon, what about you? I mean, one of my, another one of my favorites, the, the Last of England. Um, how did you sort of come up with that? Presumably that, that's, I mean, it's a similar way to Rick, actually. I mean, so many people, are, we're both composers, so many people that must have asked us right. thousands of times, how do you compose? Yeah. We don't know. It really is a mystery. You just don't know. But hopefully at the end of it, you've come up with something that works and it's right. And people go, well, that's perfect for that. How did you do that? I don't know. But you just, you just focus on it. It's a subliminal thing. The last, most of those pieces I wrote getting off of 20 years ago. Right. So they've been around a long time. The Brotherhood, it's called the Brotherhood Suite, inspired by pre-Raphaelite okay. paintings. They've been around a long time. Uh, a piece on there called The Light of the World. I wrote the main riff, and Rick doesn't know this, 1973. Oh, that man. opening riff I wrote in 1973. Yeah. <laughs> you had a hard paper around, didn't you, Rick? You've had a tough <laughs> life. <laughs> Guys, it's great to talk to you as ever. And as I said, the best of luck with Thanks, you. I'm sure you're not Thanks for coming all the way down from... Was it Liverpool today? It was today, yes. What a story. I came down on the train challenge. as well. You came down on the train. Yeah. British yes. Rail. God bless you. <laughs> that is Virgin Trains, actually. Oh, is it? Oh. Mm, cool. I prefer using Virgin Trains. Yes. And on that note, it's goodbye from me <laughs> and it's goodbye from him. <laughs>